G'day guys, Troy from FM Life, and today we've got a tips, tricks, and guide video on mentoring. But before we kick off with the video, I just want to invite you over to uh, Twitter, and I'm part of a new group called The Dugout. Um, so essentially, very new group, and uh, as a welcome, we we want to give away a free copy of FM19. So if you haven't already brought yourself a copy, um, just in time for Christmas, we're giving away a copy of FM19. So all you have to do simply is uh, follow the accounts and also retweet the tweet. Um, links will be in the description um, to where you need to go. Also, while you're there, you might as well uh, give me a follow as well. Uh, links, as always, are in the description below. I don't really push people over to my Twitter, uh, but it's a good way to catch up and see what um, see what I'm actually producing um, and when my videos go live. And also, my DMs are always open, so you can always you know ask your questions in there as long as um, as well as sorry uh, in my videos. All right, so mentoring is a, a new feature in FM19. In fact, it's replaced uh, tutoring, which uh, I've done a fair few videos on tutoring in the past, and it's, it was always a good way to develop younger players and get their professionalism right up there uh, as soon as possible. Um, although, be it, it was very, a very handy tool to have in the tutoring in the previous games, but it was kind of unrealistic. And uh, in this year's in this year's version of the game, the training and the mentoring side of things, it has become more in line with what actual real clubs do and it's uh, not so much of a hack. So gone are the days where your whole under 18 side has got a professional personality and uh, they can develop you know, really fast. Um, this is more of an organic uh, way to do it. It still essentially does the same thing. Mentoring will increase personality, it will increase the determination and also uh, pass on player PPMs, but it's more organic. It's, it's a slower process and you really have to think about this a little bit more. So why do we mentor a player? And uh, it's pretty simple for me. The main reason is to uh, get a better personality. So the main area of, well, the personality in, self, in itself is made up of a couple of hidden attributes and also a uh, player's determination. Uh, so what we're looking for is their professionalism. Now it's an attribute that you can't see in game. Sometimes you can see it within their reports if it is high or low, but a player's personality will give you an indication on where his professionalism sits. So professional personality obviously is gonna have a high um, professionalism attribute model, model uh, citizen also and there's a couple other ones fairly professional so you know it's not too high it's not too low it's it's kind of in the middle ground or a little bit higher than uh, middle is fairly professional um, so yeah so that's what we're looking to increase we're looking to get that model a citizen is the highest of the pinnacle um, and that is the holy grail not too many players in the game will actually have that personality so we are shooting for the stars to try to get everyone up to a model citizen. But uh, in all essence, what we're trying to do is increase the professionalism because that will give the player a boost when he's developing. So he'll develop faster than the rest. Now the big thing for me is what uh, is what has changed from mentoring to tutoring is now well last year's version and the previous year before that you can choose to just pass on his personality attributes and determination attribute um, but now and, and then also there's an, there was another option where you could pass on all of that plus he uh, plays PPM so that's the category of, that's uh, something I didn't really choose in the previous versions of the game uh, because it got a little bit too messy in a lot of the established players there are in the game there's always <clears throat> normally there's always one or two um ppms that i don't quite like and i don't really like to um choose a ppm for a player especially when i don't know how my tactic will play in the future so that's something that i've had to change going from tutoring to mentoring is really have a look at the players ppms because i don't want too many of those negative uh, ppms to be passed on to the younger players so we're mentoring in FM19, unlike yesterday where it was a one-on-one -on -one kind of situation, we need to set up groups. So the groups have to be no less than uh, three players. I wouldn't recommend doing a too large of a group because you want the players to spend as much time as possible with those players. So if you've got one guy that's a significant uh, influence, and we'll get through that in a second, you want him to spend um, you know, much larger chunks with those just separate players. If you've got a whole massive group of you know 10 players, he's got to try to uh, pass on his personality to 10 different players so it's more beneficial if you set up smaller groups um, wherever possible 
So what I will typically do is set up a couple groups. I've just got three examples here, the defense, the mid, the attack. Uh, pretty straightforward. Still like it was in tutoring. You need to be of the kind of same uh, positioning, you know, a defense, a mid attack kind of area. Um, and that's also displayed in the units as well. I think that does have a, a little bit of a boost when you are try to uh, trying to pass on those personality attributes. And also with the PPMs, you want to make sure, say if you've got an attacking striker and a defensive uh, player, it's, the PPMs are kind of, they're going to clash. So you don't always want a, a defending player to shoot from distance and, uh, you know, so on and so forth. All right, so here's just an example that I've set up uh, quite quickly is uh, just a couple of groups that I would choose uh, going forward. So I will start here at defense. We've got Valencia, Delot, and uh, Luke Shaw. So Luke Shaw is a little bit older at 22. And what I might say is it doesn't matter on the age of the player now. If they're in the group, they can still learn personality uh, traits and also um, the uh, PPMs of another player in that group. So if you've got the one player, as, as I said to you before, keep the group small. If you've got Valencia in with a couple of... Of, uh, he's professional at the moment, but if you've got him in with uh, unambitious players and they're all unambitious or their personality is uh, quite poor, then that can actually rub off on Valencia. Now, it's not very likely because of the match experience he has and he's a team leader at the club, um, but still you can uh, move over some of those negative personality attributes. So just keep an eye on that. Try to keep the group small, as I said before. Um, so so we have Valencia, the lot, and Shaw. We have a look at the hierarchy at the club. So if he is a team leader or higher up in the team um, the team hierarchy then he will have a greater influence over the group in general so we can see Valencia has that significant influence over the whole group. Um, as you can see, when we go down to the different categories, that's what I've got. My highly influential player in Herrera, we've got Herrera, McTominay, and Pereira. He is, um, he's got the best personality. Um, it doesn't show up as, as significant, but that only comes up if um, if he's a team leader in the club. So highly influential player. He's the highest in the pecking order of that group. He has got the best personality and the best determination as well. So that's why I've set up these groups, keep them quite small. You can set up multiple groups for defense and mid if you like um, but I do like to keep them quite small Okay, over to the attacking group here, and um, as we can see, we've got Angle Gomez, who doesn't start in the first team, uh, so I'd actually had to move him up to the first side. So in mentoring this year, if you're, in, if you're in the senior squad, you can only mentor players within that senior squad, and so on and so forth as we go down in under 23s and under 18s. You can still set, and I'll just show you quickly, you can still set mentoring groups for the under 23s and under 18s as a separate kind of area. So if you have a look, click the assistant, he's gonna set up uh, one or two different groups. now. When you have a look at the overall squad of an under-23 side is the personalities normally are not the best. Uh, a couple of guys there which are okay. Ma uh, Marcus Rojo is a uh, resolute personality because he's, I think he's been trying to be pushed out of the club and he's injured. Um, so yeah, you can set up all these individual groups. So just start early if you can. If you have a look, see the under-18s, a couple of determination, uh, determined players there. Um, so maybe try to set those players up with a couple of other guys in, uh, in the actual squad itself. And the under-18s, and the under 23s also have a hierarchy and they also have um, a social group so uh, just keep an eye on that and keep that in mind uh, when setting up the the mentoring groups for those um, for the under 18s and the under 23s so yeah, I've moved Angel Gomez up into the senior squad and um, I wouldn't recommend uh, moving up a whole bunch of players. What I do recommend is maybe your top two, top three uh, younger prospects at the club in the under 23s and under 18s, moving them up to the senior squad uh, side to get that tutoring or the mentoring, sorry, uh, started early. Um, don't move too many of the players because if they are training with the senior squad, uh, you've got to have a look at the coach's overall workload. So to keep um, your star rating and to keep your players happy, you need to make Make sure the workload on your individual coaches are set to light as possible so light to average um, if you start moving the whole your whole you know squad or whole team to your first team um, this is going to increase the workload for your coaches which is not going to make it as effective um, so just keep an eye on that as i said just two to three of your best players uh, move them into the squad um, the other thing you need to have a look at is within the staff and your coaching staff for the first team is you need to have a look at if they can actually work with youngsters 
So the working with youngsters attribute will actually give you a little bit of a boost when uh, training players that are under the age of 23. Uh, so just make sure your coaching staff and going forward, you know, a lot of FM players do like to bring in young talent and put them into the first team straight away. Um, so over time, just when you are searching for new staff or new staff for the first team, uh, just make sure they um, they can work with youngsters. There's a couple guys here, the goalkeeping coach at six. Um, we've got the fitness coach at eight. That's probably not good enough. So going forward, I would probably get rid of him and just look to get uh, a player or uh, sorry a coach that can work with youngsters because in the future you know I'm going to be looking at having a fairly young squad so uh, just keep that in mind uh, before you're going to move you know your whole under 18s into the first team okay so to recap keep your groups quite small uh, make sure you've got a um in the hierarchy, a team leader or highly influential player, just make sure they've got that good personality before you chuck them into a group. Um, move your, you know, two to three good young prospects at the club, move them up to the first team, get them to, to get their personality up. Once they're up, if they're not good enough for the first team, I suggest just moving them back down to the under 23s and under 18s and then set them to two to some of those players in that group. Um, so then for in the with the whole club, um, right the way down to the under 18s, you're gonna start to get uh, better personality personalities now this is not um it doesn't happen overnight uh, but it will happen i've heard that before um it doesn't happen overnight and it's a longer process than it was in previous versions of the game but you know in saying that it's it's a good thing because in previous versions of the game you know you had 15 year olds with model personalities and uh you know professionalism right up there and they grew quicker than the whole league or the rest of the actual um game it's, it could so the ai managers were at a disadvantage so you know if you had a longer save you can really get some really good players that are you know that at their peak at you know 19 20 which is not really realistic all right, guys, that's it for me. Hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it has helped you out. Um, if there's any tips and tricks and guides you want to see for FM19, uh, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to get a video out there or try to just answer your comment in the comments. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.